A new era, and I'm fascinated, an era where we go back to what we were more used to in terms of economic cycles. We've been in eight to 10 year economic cycles where the Fed could go to zero. You think inflation drops, but then stays sort of in a position where it could go up again it, on short notice. And that's gonna be the new normal for you. And that, that, that makes things very different to try to plan out. That's exactly right, Joe. I mean, and we've talked about this even prior to COVID, right? We said we were going to be ending financial repression in the next recession. And of course, the, the pandemic, you know, provided the perfect setup for that because, you know, the fiscal, uh, you know, stimulus got blown out. And that's really what led to the inflation boom. And this is where we, I think we have a very differentiated view from a lot of our peers, which is we don't think it's the 70s. We think it's more the 40s where it's a boom bust. And what I mean by that is it's a demand pull inflation as opposed to a cost push. And therefore, uh, inflation can ebb as quickly as it flows when demand falls by the wayside and supply picks up. And that's exactly the setup that we see for 2023, right? You have easy comparisons. Supply is picking up now. Demand is fading at the same time. And look, we just go back to Milton Friedman's, you know, Original quote, uh, inflation is a monetary phenomena, and M2 growth has plunged, right? We, we were 27% growth year over year in the first quarter of 21, and now we're down to about two and a half. So, you know, that's a leading indicator, and, 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 and that's just a different environment than we've been operating in for the last, you know, 30 years where everything was so predictable, right? Whether it's inflation, whether it's other economic variables, we're going into an environment now where a economic variable volatility is going to be extreme. And that's a difficult operating environment. And, you know, some companies will do a good job of that and some won't. But it creates probably a lot more dispersion, quite frankly, across the stock market. I think it, 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 it's not definitely not bearish, I don't think. It, it, you might think it would be because nobody likes inflation, but nobody likes deflation either. Now, that's even worse, uh, I think. And if you could have... Even if it was 3%, a lot of times stocks, the stock market does pretty well, uh, might be the best asset to have with, with a, a, a moderate inflation. 2% uh, is perfect, I guess, but even if it was just, if it was to oscillate between 2% and maybe 4% in, in boom periods, that seems like you would get bullish on the stock market. And you do think we might hit bottom in the bear market sometime early next year or early to mid next year? Well, that's right. And I would I would extend that range. It's not probably two to four. It's probably more like, you know, one and six. OK, so, you know, it's a big range. And think about this way, Joe. Right. So during the you know the pandemic, right, companies over earned uh, some of that was obviously with excess demand. But a lot of it also had to do with inflation. Companies had extraordinary pricing power and they had uh, tremendous operating margins. Now we're seeing the opposite of that, where costs are actually increasing more than end price uh, you know, components. And that leads to margin compression, so negative operating leverage. But just got to remember, on the other side of that will be another boom. So as bearish as we are on 2023 for earnings, we're actually probably more bullish than most for 2024 based on that thesis. Now, we don't have a crystal ball, but look, we've been talking about this for several years now. We think it's been playing out. And, and you're exactly right. This is a if you understand this, and oh, by the way, you have to agree with it. If you, but if you understand this, it can be a very profitable environment for investors to just be more tactical around these swings in economic activity, and and that's how we're going to trade it. That's what we do. We're cycle analysts, and you know this is actually kind of a sweet spot for us the way we look at the way we manage money.